So Helium 10 have launched a new AI tool, which is meant to allow you to be able to create high quality lifestyle images. Now, if they've actually been able to do this and the tool works well, this is incredible because lifestyle images are so important to the success of your Amazon product. They create an emotional response. They make the customer imagine using the product and it leads to a higher conversion rate. But the issue is with lifestyle images, is that they're also the most expensive kind of images to create because they require sets, they require models. So if this tool works, this is gonna be amazing and it's gonna save you a lot of money. But the question is, does it work properly? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the tool and we're gonna see whether it works well or not. Okay guys, so what you wanna do is log into Helium 10 and then once you're in the Helium 10, you wanna come over to Tools and then in tools, you want to come over to listing optimization and then come down to the listing builder. And it will take you to a page that looks like this. Now, guys, if you're not already using Helium 10, you can sign up for a discount using the link in the description. And you can also use codes LucaDAV10 or LucaDAV20 for either 20% off for six months or 10% off for life. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this tool. But for all of Helium 10's tools, they do have this little learn button, which opens a video which teaches you how to use the tool if you want to have a look at that as well. So the first thing you want to do is click add a listing and then you want to click generate images with AI. Select your marketplace. So I'm going to select amazon.co.uk Then you can enter in your ASIN, but I'm just going to leave this blank for this example and then click start building. Okay, guys. So what you'll see is that on the left hand side, you have all of the settings. And then on the right hand side is going to show you the images it's created. And at the moment, it's just showing you some example images. Now I've had a play around with this tool. As you can see, I've used it 15 times. I can tell you none of the images I've created so far have looked anything quite like this. Um, but let's see if we can, we can get any good images created. So the first thing you want to do is select image size. So if you're creating a standard image for your product listing, you would just select this main image up here. But they also have different sizes. So if you're creating an Amazon post, uh, if you're creating some A plus content, there's different sizes that relate to those different image sizes for those different placements. Um, you can also click custom size if you want to create a custom size image. So I'm going to leave this as main image because I just want this to be a lifestyle image for my Amazon listing. Um, for the main images. So then the next thing you do is upload a photo. So I'm gonna start off with something a little bit more complex, which is the laptop stand. It has more gaps and more kind of move, kind of um, curved parts. And then I'm also gonna try it with a water bottle, which is something a bit more simple if it doesn't work particularly well. Okay, so I've just uploaded an image of a laptop stand, which you can see over there. Um, and then your next option is the overall theme. So these th this overall theme and theme setting uh, can be left blank. So basically what they do is you have two options. Either you can select a theme and theme setting, which will auto generate an image description, or you can create your own image description. Now this image description is like a classic prompt, like you would use in any of the other AI tools. So for example, let's say I selected home and you know, appropriate for a laptop fan, let's say a home office. So creative home office, you'll see that it adds in a description here. They basically create the prompts for you. Product in a home office setting with an organized desk, inspirational wall art, bookshelves, filed with literature and a comfortable ergonomic chair. So we can try that first. And then I'm also going to try just putting in my own prompt. So then after that, we've got product scale. So this is basically how big your product is going to be in this lifestyle image. So this is preset at 0.8, 80%. I'm going to leave it at that. I've tried it higher. When you get to 100%, it just kind of crops part of the image. So 80% seems like a good sweet spot, but you can make this smaller if you want to. Now, these are advanced settings. So these are normally hidden and you can leave it as it is, or you can click into these advanced settings. Now, the first thing you get with advanced settings is anything that you want to avoid. So let's say, and I'll show you an example of this, but let's say that in this setting, the images that came up had um, maybe pencils in a little kind of um, stationary holder, but you didn't want there to be any stationary on the desk. You can write in avoid stationary. Now, in my experience, this doesn't work particularly well, so I'm gonna leave this blank for now, but we can always try it later on. Um, but this is if you want anything to be avoided. The next thing you have is prompt strength. So basically, if I go over the uh, information button, what you can see is that basically this is how tightly you want the AI tool to stick to your prompt. 
So if you wanted to stitch your prompt 100% and do exactly what you say in your prompt, you put it up to 10. If you wanted to have it, the AI to be a bit more creative, then you can put this all the way down to one. So this is just a sliding scale. So I'm gonna stick with it at eight because that's what it's preset at, but we can have to play around with that again. The final advanced setting is that you get the, I, the option of two AI engine models, AWS Bedrock and Stability AI. Now, if you look at the information button, AWS Bedrock is the one that's automatically selected. And basically what the tool says is that this is the best for creating realistic photography. But if you want to create something with rich backgrounds, a little bit more artistic, that's where Stability AI comes in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick with AWS AWS Bedrock, and then we're gonna generate some images. Now just bear in mind that it does take, it says it can take up to five minutes. In my experience, it's not that long but it definitely does take a few minutes for these to load. So let's skip to these being created. Okay, so let's have a look what is created. So these actually look pretty decent. So let me look, look, click into these and we'll have a little look. Okay, so this is pretty good. So basically what it's done is it's worked out that what the product is, the AI has worked out that it should be on top of the desk. Um, it's put it on top of the desk. It, when I've tested this previously, it kind of put it half on the desk and half off the desk, which was a bit weird. And it does kind of do weird stuff like that. But here it's got it right. It's put it on the desk. It's seen what it is and it's put things around it. And the prompt says, uh, organized desk, inspirational wall art, bookshelves filled with literature. Okay, so there's not bookshelf there, but there is there. You can see the um, inspirational wall art in the background and a comfortable ergonomic chair. So you can't really see the chair, but in general, it's done a pretty good job that everything looks pretty, pretty good. Let's have a look at some of the other ones. That's re really good to be honest. I'm really impressed. The only thing that looks a little bit dodgy is it does look a little bit cropped and photoshopped on, which wouldn't be that different as if you if you got like a photo editor to do this for you. Um, but overall, that look that looks pretty pretty decent. This is where it kind of starts to fall apart a little bit, in my opinion. Um, and I'm surprised the prompt suggests putting books and poster art. Basically, where it starts to fall apart, and this is a very common thing with AI, is when there's text. So whenever there's something like books in the background, a poster or anything like that, in my experience, it doesn't make any sense. It's just completely random text that it starts to look a little bit weird. Um, so what you could do in this situation is basically put in something like here, you could avoid any text. You could ask it to avoid books or posters. Obviously you could just remove those from the prompt, but that's something where if you didn't have it in your prompt and you didn't want there to be any books because the text look weird, we could put here is avoid books and it should then remove the, um, the books from the background here. So let's try that. So I'm going to write avo avoid books. And let's regenerate these and see if it removes these books from the background. Okay, so this is now being created. Let me click into it and see how it's done. Okay, first of all, there's loads of books in this photo. So again, this is something that doesn't work particularly well. Now I've tested this out quite a bit and the avoid option, in my opinion, doesn't really work that well. It might be because it has the books in the prompt, but even when I've done other prompts, I try to remove pencils once, um, pens, and it didn't really do it. So. The avoid option doesn't work that well. Um, and again, here the text just looks really weird. And there's just some weird stuff like, what is this stuck to the wall? Um, look, it's not perfect, that's reality. Um, you just have to keep playing around with it. For instance, this photo, if you could remove this, maybe crop this funny text, at a glance, this looks fine. What these are, what's going on here is a bit weird. And this is what I've kind of found with my testing. You do get some photos that look fine, but there is some quite creepy kind of strange stuff. The text looks weird. And then sometimes, sometimes it's just bizarre things. Like I was testing this earlier with this laptop stand and there was just a tube of lipstick just stuck onto the laptop stand. So there's some really weird things that happen, um, but it's about just trying to, you only need to find one image that works well. So you can play around with this and I'm confident that you will find something that works well, but at the moment it is quite janky. Okay, so that's the first AI engine. Let's remove this avoid thing. Let's stick with exactly the same description, but let's try the other AI engine, which is the stability AI, and let's try and generate these images. Now, when you select stability AI, you have a choice of a bunch of different AI styles. So you can see this 3D modeling, cinematic, comic book, I think anime is an option as well somewhere. So there's all these different options. 
For this example, I'm just gonna keep it the same. We want a photo, so let's just try phot photographic and then let's click generate images. And let's see how this AI engine actually compares and looks different to the first one. So in the way that I've tested it, I would basically agree with what Helium 10 says. Well, in my testing, what I found is that for the first one, I'm trying to remember the name of it, uh, the AWS Bedrock Titan um, one, basically that's really good. Well, not really good, but it's the best, better out of the two at creating kind of realistic background images. But sometimes it's a bit blurry, it's a bit dull, whereas the Stability AI is better for kind of artistic, rich backgrounds. And, and you might not always want to create something realistic. You might want to create something abstract. And I'll show you what that would look like in a bit as well. And in my experience, when you're trying to create something abstract with a bright, colorful background, actually the Stability AI one works better. So let's see how it does with this kind of real life setting first. Okay, here are the results. So this is a very, very good example of what I was talking about earlier. So it's just not understood where the product should be placed. And this just shows you how good, how good the first AI is actually working out what the product is because the AI understands that this is a laptop stand and this should go on a desk and it's done that. Whereas this model, the stability one, is not very good at doing that. So it's just popped the, the product in the center of this image. It's not put it on the desk and it doesn't really make sense. What it has done very well is created a really nice, rich, detailed, colorful background, much better than the previous AI tool, just as I was saying. But... The product's just in completely the wrong place, so it's just completely unusable. It's basically just stuck in the middle, which is no good at all. Um, so, like I said, this is not helpful if you're trying to create something like this, but imagine you were trying to create something abstract. You were trying to create a splash of water behind the product or multicolored skittles flying everywhere. It wouldn't matter if the product's right in the middle, and that's where this AI shines. So let me show you an example of that. Okay, so what I've done is I've just switched out the laptop stand for a water bottle. I'm going to leave this overall theme and theme settings blank and I'm just going to add in my own prompt. And the prompt I'm going to use here is product. So when you create these prompts, the ones that they, the kind of examples they give will start with product. So that's, that's how I'm going to start mine. Product in a big splash of blue water. Okay, so the idea is that the water bottle's in this splash of blue water. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to leave this at 80%. I'm not going to avoid anything. I'm going to leave the prompt strength at 8 out of 10. And then I'm going to select the stability AI because I want that really rich artistic kind of background. Leave it a photo, I can't speak today, photographic. And then I'm going to generate images. Now you might be thinking, should I always use my own prompts? Because if I use the Helium 10 prompts, the ones through those theme settings, won't I get very similar images to other people? Now the answer to that is no, because because this is an AI model, even if you use the same prompts and then you use the same prompts a few minutes later, you will get completely different results. So I've used that same prompt with that laptop stand before I recorded the video a few different times and I got completely different desks, different settings each time. Now, sometimes it was half off the desk and looked a bit weird and then sometimes it was on it. So all you want to do is number one, play around with all the different settings. And then number two, refresh it, retry the same settings again and again. So if you get something that you kind of like, but you just want tweaked a little bit, leave the same settings, but just search the same thing over and over again until you get something that looks right, if something looks a bit weird. Or you can use those avoid settings to try and remove things that look weird. Okay, these are the results. So as you can see, really bright, vibrant images. So if I click into this one, look at these four, this is probably my favorite. So. That looks pretty good. That look, that's very, very impressive that that's just created it. That looks a little bit weird. It kind of looks like it's underwater, which is not really what I wanted. And again, like there's the kind of weird things over the side, which I have no idea what those are. But this first one looks, looks pr pretty good. The reflection looks a little bit funny because I'm not really sure what that says there. But in general, this is a pretty cool image, image. And this is actually something that you can just create using this tool for free, which is amazing. Now, like I said, another thing you can do is you can actually change this prompt strength to give the AI tool more of its own creativity. So even though this is a really simple prompt, I'm gonna give this a go and see how it works. Now, normally if you had a really long, complex prompt, this is where this would come in helpful because the, the base of the AI will pick and choose what it wants to include. With a small prompt like this, it's probably not gonna make much difference, but let's see if I drop it down to one, let's see what we get here. I have to say it's been brief, but in my brief testing so far, I much prefer the Bedrock Titan AI model to the Stability AI model. 
I just there's just something about the stability AI model which I, I just don't think it understands the prompts as well. Uh, it doesn't understand where the product should go in the background as well. Um, yes, they're more rich and vibrant, but personally, I'm just not really enjoying using it as much as I am the Bedrock Titan, and that's probably why the Bedrock Titan is the preset option. Okay, and these are the results, so let's have a look. So, as you can see, pretty similar to the first one, but actually, I kind of prefer that. I, I quite like that. It, it's pretty similar, but as you can see, what it's done here, for instance, is that it's given it a bit of a red background, which is not something I asked for, but it's used its own creativity to do something like that. So that's the kind of small changes you'll get in a simple problem like this if you let the AI, AI do its thing a little bit more. But I really like some of these. That one's a bit weird. But yeah, th this looks really good. And it's amazing, you know, like I said, that this is just created for free. Now, I want to try one more thing using this tool. And what I want to do is I want to see whether it can actually create a human a real model and this is something that ai kind of struggles with especially around hands now hands holding products but the thing is so far what i would say is that this ai tool is okay it's not quite there yet i would still prefer to use real life type photography or even photoshopping but in a pinch if you want to save money then this can be useful for creating uh, for basically creating a fake uh, background a lifestyle background that's great but the question is can it create a model? Can it replace the use of an actual human model? Well, let's see. Okay, so I've been trying to think of uh, our prompt here. Let's let's think. Let's do something. There's product being held by runner by female runner, female female runner. Okay, let's see if it can do that. And I'm going to change this from stability to the bedrock because, like I said, the stability is not very good at this. Prompt strength, I want it to be very close to what I've asked for, so I'm gonna put it at nine, but give it a little bit of freedom there, and then I'm gonna leave everything else as it is and click generate image. Okay, and here are the results. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why it's done this, but it's made the product tiny. Um, so it's made this water bottle, a mini water bottle. Um, that's kind of a normal size, but a bit odd. I mean, a, a runner who's looking at her nails and holding the bottle there. This is just AI summarizing in a nutshell, isn't it? It's just, it kind of understands the context, but it, it doesn't really understand the context. You know, no human would create something that looks like this. It's just bizarre. Um, I, again, a tiny, tiny water bottle with a giant fingernail, very weird. So this this is the kind of janky this that I'm talking about. Um, again, she's holding it the, there with her nail. Very strange. I mean, I'm impressed that it's be, been able to create a human model, to be fair. Um, it's just not quite right. It's just not quite there. Um, but I would imagine that if you tweak this a little bit more. So this is a very basic prompt. So all I said was, um, where is it? Product being held by female runner. Now, if you had said something a bit more like being held in the hand, gripped while she runs, held to a side and you were a bit more specific you'd probably get a better image than this um but basically what was my kind of summary well at the moment at the moment is this going to replace as it is right now is this going to replace you know getting proper lifestyle photography taken or getting a video uh an image like editor to actually create proper images no it's not it's not quite there however we're at a really early stage at the moment with ai and this is pretty impressive that it can do this within a few minutes you can do this free and it can create pretty good images. If this is where we're at now, in a few years, these are gonna be incredible. They're honestly gonna be photorealistic. And they, is, as soon as the AI is able to understand context a little bit better and not do kind of strange things like, like this, which don't make any sense, um, this is gonna be so much better. And I can very, very much see a future where pretty much all Amazon sellers are getting their lifestyle cr images created like this instead because it's cheaper and they're going to look amazing. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments. And as always, guys, if you found the video helpful, give it a like, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.